Hello, welcome to Just All Things. My name is Jonathan and I buy and sell vintage clothing for a living. And if you've been watching some of the videos, you know I've been spending quite a bit of time on whatnot and I've been making some purchases. And while I was making some purchases, an old contact popped up in chat. I was like, I have some stock for you. And it's just arrived. I've cracked it open, but I haven't looked. So we're gonna explore it together. But first I'm gonna show you the few bits I have bought off whatnot. Um, because frankly, there is lots of good stuff to buy. So I paid up a little bit on this. I paid, I say paid up a little bit. I only paid a tenner, but it's a quick silver chalk coat. Nice heavy twill, nicely faded throughout. Uh, really nice piece. Um, honestly, big fan of quick silver and that kind of style. Very workwear-esque. Paid three quid for a uh, Guinness polo. Guinness polos are just doing well at the minute. I can't remember what I paid for this, a couple of quid, but I actually bought this myself. It's a Nike, like a dry fit golf top, but it's the old gray Team Nike. Um, and it's just, I like the color, I like the pattern. So that is coming home with me. Um, this, basically, when you buy on whatnot, you pay your postage, so like £2.70, and then um, it'll automatically calculate based on the weight you put in for the item how much extra you need to pay. And then when it hits a certain point, you'll just stick it onto DPD next day. Um, so the first one, if you pay three quid, you'll pay three quid plus three quid post essentially. But then everything else is just the price plus like 30p or something. Uh, I've got this really nice uh, North Face women's just like uh, outdoor top. But the cool bit is it's got like Adobe sponsored. So it's obviously been used for some kind of workwear. If you're wondering what the stupid thing is on my arm, I've kind of partially tore uh, ligament off my arm and this thing here pushes the muscle up to let the ligament heal um but yeah so when, like i've got like, all these stupid straps on this needs a really good clean but it's a really funky big billabong hoodie and i paid a couple of quid for this but i think that'll do well um i can't remember why i bought these they might have just been cheap size small adidas joggers um, I, I, these might be from Flip Room. I can't remember though. Um, I did buy something from Flip Room and I thought they were medium joggers because uh, I remember buying them for my son. However, um, I got some small joggers, so maybe I bought something from somebody else. I don't know. I can't keep up with who I buy from at the minute. That's part of the joy of uh, this uh, whatnot. You just kind of flitter from seller to seller having little bids on stuff. Gets a bit addictive, to be honest. Champion. Uh, t-shirt I bought that for myself um, I actually got outbid on this so think twice Alex over at think twice was selling this um, I got outbid at the last second by thrift store uh, Tia over at thrift store so I sent her a message saying I'll give you a tenner for it I think she paid like three or four quid for it um, and Alex was nice enough to switch it from her purchase into mine i just sent her a message on pay uh, paypal her the tenor and bought the t-shirt straight from her so immediate profit for her but again i bought that for myself um carhartt shorts uh i think it was like five quid from um think twice now this is where stuff got interesting think twice had some old military stuff now these would use as ski pants but these are actually 1973 uh so we're talking end of vietnam cold weather so full fleece line para trousers um they're worn but i mean it's proper military wear i don't think i paid that much for this because people like it's kind of one of those niche things that only weirdos like me will know about um and i think i only paid a couple of quid the resale on those is 50 plus um i just thought these were cool you had like loads of cool hunting stuff um if you haven't got on whatnot you won you should even if it's just buying if you want to sell uh, there's information below. Just send me an email and I'll forward your information to the appropriate people. But there's, uh, get on there and buy stuff. I've seen a few of you in chat notice me buying stuff. So hello to you guys. But um, you guys should definitely want to get in there. Now these are redhead hunting pants. Super thick cotton, but massive cotton reinforced. Um, like front and back. Massive, massive zips on them. Really, really cool. Uh, just solid hunting trousers. 
they aren't actual military ones, but they are digital camo ripstop, um, which I think are cool. The cargoes, 20, 25 quid all day. More ripstop cargoes. Um, I think I paid five quid for both pairs, like two pound 50 a pair. You can't beat that. <clears throat> Big um, military style uh, twill cotton smock pullover. Again, super, super cool, and it's quite old. Now these are really cool. Lee Ryder Sanforized. And not only are they Sanforized, but they're salvaged. And they are old from the 50s. Sanforized is a term from the 50s. Basically, um, it's actually French, I think. The French started using it. Basically it means pre-shrunk. So the cotton's pre-shrunk. So it's not gonna shrink in the wash. But old talon zip. Um, they're distressed, but I mean, they're 50 years old. I think I only paid a couple of quid for those, which is good. And then another military style pullover. Um, it's got a brand Rio Descent. I uh, haven't looked at it, but it is what it is. Just another cool smock. Those things just sell well. Similar to the drill tops that you get, the Adidas drill tops. Now uh, this is cool. Um, this is a skate band, W-E-S-C, Superlative Conspiracy Worldwide, just a t-shirt. Um, it's not a single stitch, this was from Hambao 420. She bought the Stussy that we had up, and I got this because, again, combined shipping, you might as well spend it on something. And then another cool piece, I only paid a fiver for this. Um, again, I don't think, think twice is, uh, not think twice, I don't think whatnot is a place for uh, such unique vintage. But this is a 1950s, um, either French or Swedish leather jacket, full moleskin lined. Um, if you look at the zips, we've got an EWA zip on there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that was common in the 50s. And then the German zip with a double P. You can just tell by the style of the zip, it's old. Um, not only that, but then you've got the braided uh, epaulettes on the back drawstring waist and this thing is heavy i wouldn't be surprised if this is uh, possibly horse hide um it's just definitely got that weight to it but the going weight on those is 150 100 125 150 quid um and it paid a fiver for it so bargain oh that's those fake Versace jeans from the other week so that's not part of this we'll just hide them down the back of there Pretend they don't exist. Now this is the fun bit. Now I've not looked at this yet. So we're looking at this together. Percent zips. We've got some damage to the pit, but that's not a biggie. That can be tidied up. It needs a clean anyway. But look how old this bad boy is. Made in Italy, fleece lined Parker from like the 50s or 60s. Uh, maybe 70s yeah I'll probably say 60s 70s looking at it full fleece lined uh, Parker it needs some TLC but I don't know if you see the uh, fabric cuffs it's got as well but a really really cool piece made in Milan by the looks of it it's all going to fall off there isn't it son of a bitch right we'll move that over there Ooh. Right, military coat for sure. You just feel it. This feels very reminiscent of the big Swedish winter coats. Super thick canvas, fleece line, but not quite sheep's. It's not. I don't think it's real sheepskin. So it probably puts it 60s, 70s. It smells like diesel. Wow. I quite like the smell of that, to be fair. It smells like fuel. Old military style lock zip. Can't see any tags or anything. Just a, an old military fleece line jacket. Some damage to the sleeve, but not a big deal. Oh, wow. I don't know if we've got any punk rockers in the house, but if we have, 
an old rapid zip. Wow, okay. So, big heavy duty uh, cold weather uh, wool trousers. Um, oh. Genuine boat sail drill. So maybe sailing? Need to do a bit of research on them. Military, lightweight. Uh, just a lightweight jacket, really. Any tags? Can't see any tags, but it's just a nice lightweight hunting jacket, nice camo hunting jacket. Oh, this is interesting. <clears throat> oh, is this rubberized? Well, this is well old. Rubberized, world famous, rubberized rain wear for fishing, outdoor hunting, Japan. It is Japanese. I was wondering about the old YKK zip. So YKK, if you don't know, is Japanese. But look at that old tag. It is flaking. It is coming away. But the patina just kind of adds a lot to it. Um, the waterproof edging has come away. It's definitely not going to be waterproof anymore, not around that hood. But a bit of research, that might still be worth a few pennies. Now, for this box, I paid like 500 quid. So I did pay up on the box, I think. But old Talon Zip. You've seen the Talon Zip guide? Look at that old Talon Zip. Um, you give you an idea. I'm guessing, looking at it, 70s. Just a nice cool, uh, like a woolen um, duffel coat essentially. I guess it used to have a full zip line in, but it's been removed. But that is cool. Ha! Huh. Wow. Fucking hell, this is heavy. This is a full actual sheepskin lined um, body warmer. And we're talking actual hide. We can get these buttons undone. Come on. Last button's been a pain in the ass. Oh, it's twisted, that's why. So it's some kind of European. I'm guessing Eastern Europe. Just given the, the spelling. There's your tag, but this is an actual full fleece. This is actual hide. I don't know if you can see around the edge there, but that is actual hide. Um, going to be worth a couple of quid. All the ha full hides pieces always are. Oh, wow. Okay. It got dry cleaned at some point. Not to sound like crass or anything, but this looks like a bloody prisoner of war coat. That thick kind of like industrial workwear. Um, like they kind of, if you ever watch war movies, they're always kind of wearing that in the POW camps, that kind of thing. Need to do a bit of research on that. This has its hood. Work King. Full fleece lined. Big, chunky YKK zip. Like double button closing, part quilt lined. I'm guessing 80s. Oh, made in Canada, here we go. So I'm guessing like 80s. Big duck cotton uh, fleece lined, like work coat again. That's cool. Ooh. Just another like jungle camo jacket. Really nice. Oh, wow. So these are 1990. These are F1B para um, trousers. So the green ones earlier with the cold weather like Vietnam War ones. This is a cold weather, 
like uh, Bosnia, that kind of era, 1990, pre-Desert Storm really, or well, Desert Storm was 91 I think, but yeah, cold weather, um, power trousers, not sure what they're going to be worth, but I imagine hopefully a few quid, really cool old work jacket, look at that, look at the wear around it, that is well cool, loads of like patina remarks, that's 50, 60 quid as well. Now this is the thing, because I did see a video of it. Now this is the thing that caught my attention. I think it caught their attention as well. Um, I need to do a bit of research on this. Instead of just talking down at it, I might as well show you. It's World War II German rain camo. It feels like it might be from the right era. What we're looking for is the big thick canvas lining, chunky stitch, because obviously it wasn't refined heavy mach like machinery. It has that very heavy stitching around the collar, which is typical of old um, military stuff. I'm not an expert on German stuff, so in fact, I don't think I've ever dealt with German stuff. Oh, they've got some, got some stamping, which is, Old. It says 64, I don't know if that's the year or not. Maybe if you know your old military stuff, you'd be able to give me a clue. But regardless, it is cool as fuck. Just another, oh, it's a, I think it's a liner. Chunky liner, oh, it is a liner. Um, US property liner men's jacket. This feels like it's out of like a shot or something. That's very similar label to the old shots but we'll have to do a bit of research on that. Lots of research to be done on this box. Like this isn't a box you can just uh, rip through, list and crack on. This is a sit there for a good hour, figure out what the stuff is and try to make sure you're listing it properly. Another nice chalk coat. I do like the work where, ooh, whoa, this is heavy. Oh, that's beautiful. Big, like jigsaw camo um, jacket. And is that a second one? That is a second one. This is heavy as fuck. Super, super thick. Oh, it's a pullover one. Here we go. Dated 1970. A big 1970. I'm not sure which military this is, but it looks Eastern Europe. But super jigsaw pattern. Really nice. Not very faded on that one either. Now I know what this is. This is a Swedish whiteout parker. So they put this over the stuff and, oh, it's cool. It's even got the old plastic zips. Uh, basically, to hide in the white. There we go. 1992, it is Swedish. We've got the three crowns. Big white parker. Don't know what these are selling for, uh, but if you ever watch the video on like the White Ghost, the Finnish one, one of the zips is a bit knackered, but I mean, it's old military wear, what do you expect? <clears throat> that is cool. Oh, German Parker, is it? Feels very German Parkery. What zip we got? Might just be a repo one, but big German Parker. Um, then they don't sell too well. There's a few of them. Ooh, what's this? The fuck is it? I think it's just a big old German, uh, like canvas cover. Can't see that going over your head. Yeah, I mean, look at the old uh, the old buttons on it. Can't see any tags on it. Big triangular. It might even be a tent tent cover. Buttons down to something. Got peg holes on the side, so it must be like a supply cover, something like that. And it, 
yeah, have to figure that out. Don't know what it is, have to do a bit of research. But that's the fun bit. This is, this is like the weird stuff that I get that I don't tend to usually show because I'm still figuring out what it is. Um, and that's the joy of what we do. We're getting to learn and uh, play with some funky stuff. But there you go. Um, that's the weird shit I bought this week. Um, I have boom sacks on the way for next week. And if you're enjoying the random stuff I've been buying off, whatnot, let me know. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one.